Welcome back everyone. Part 3 here in this series on how to breadboard a tube preamp. And I want to apologize. I previously posted a video as part 3. Um, I was struggling to get the second half, the SRPP stage, to actually work on the breadboard. And I kind of came to the conclusion I didn't think I could do it with this setup. It was tied back to how these, uh, the 6.3 amp here didn't have a center tap and I was unable to float the... Uh, float the ground but we've since then uh, came up with an alternate solution figured that out so I'm making this video again to round out series 3 and to get it correct um, today we're actually going to build out the second half if you can see the bench is a little bit of a mess right now uh, over here we've got the single ended amplifier 807 build going on in parallel because this is the first two stages of that uh, of that amplifier and hopefully we'll have that posted here within a few days. Um, as you can see this amplifier is actually putting out a uh, nice little signal at this point in time sine wave and uh, it's actually live and running right now and we're feeding it here with the uh, Heathkit regulated high voltage power supply. But let's dive on in and uh, get, build out this SRPP stage. Okay let's talk about what we've got to add to add this second stage on. First and foremost we're taking the output right here today from this 33 microfarad capacitor. So we're going to have to add in this uh, 1K resistor right here that feeds the grid of uh, this first section of tube in this SRPP combo. And by the way, we're going to make this all within one tube. So this will be half a 6SN7. This will be the other half. We'll also need this 220K to ground. We'll need to add in from the cathode of this first section uh, from pin 6 a 1K to ground. From pin 5 of this, which is the plate of the first section, we're going to need to add a 1K up to the cathode here on this uh, second stage. So basically you'll just end up going from pin 5 to pin 3 in the same tube. Well, the 1K will end up going from pin 5 to pin 1 here, the grid of this second stage. Um, so basically within the same tube, pin 5 to pin 1 with a 1K. We'll need to take this... Um, Pin 2 here, which is the uh, plate of the second stage, and we're going to have to take it to 350 volt um, power supply. And we're going to have to, if you'll remember, um, we're going to have to kind of drop down. In other words, we're going to have to feed this at 350 volts, but then we're going to have to find a way to get this to 300 volts. And we'll be able to do that by putting in this 10K 1 watt resistor uh, between this feed point and this feed point. And that'll that'll basically give us here what we need. Um, and then we've got to put a 33 microfarad here on the output coming off the cathode of the second stage. Um, and we'll pull that over here by itself. And uh, we can take the output from there at that point in time. So that's really what we've got to build out. In the video that went wrong, what I was struggling with a little bit was this stage is supposed to be fed... Um, the, what's not shown on these tubes are the heaters, which are pins 7 and 8 for both of these. If you'll remember, pins 7 and 8 here were supposed to be fed through this uh, floating 3.15, um, 3.15, actually 6.3 total AC, uh, floating at a DC offset of around 70 to 80 volts because of this little voltage divider here pulling it up. Um, I never could get this to work because my uh, high voltage power supply up here doesn't have a center tap here, so I, I couldn't get that to work properly. Um, I originally thought I was just struggling to get this tube stage here to work because of that. Uh, turns out this tube stage will actually work with just feeding uh, pin 7 and 8, 7 and 8 straight off of um, the power supply without floating it. Um, it's not ideal for the tubes in the long run. You've got a good bit of uh, um, grid to cathode, um, I mean a heater to cathode uh, voltage, but um, for the purpose of the uh, workbench here it seemed to work out fine today. So let's dive on in. Okay, first up I'm going to feed this 350 volts instead of, before I was just coming out of my power supply right here to the 300 volts on this. Now what I'm going to do is feed 350 volts here and then uh, drop it down um, going to this one. So let's do that real quick. Okay, we'll achieve that by actually taking the B plus lead here that's coming from the power supply. And I'm just going to move it over here and give it a, a tag point. And what I'm going to do then is take a 10K resistor 
um, and feed it between there and where we were feeding the original uh, between this point here. We'll put an insert of 47K. And we got that um, by going between the 350 volt here and the 300 volt we're going to put in in a 10K. Um, so as you can see we've done that. So now we should get more like 300 volts over here and 350 volts on this side over here. And then let's we'll feed from that into pin 2 here. So what we'll do is put another little jumper in that exact same row and what we'll do is just feed it over here and drop it into the row that pin 2 is on. you got to look really good to make sure you've, you've got those lined up well. So I'm just working my way top to bottom here. Let's make a connection then between pin 1 and pin 5 with a 1K resistor. And I've got that right here. So let's go pin 1 to pin 5 right here. We can plug that in. Plug that in right there. Up next, we're going to go here. Let's see. We've got to go from pin 3 to pin 5 with a 1K resistor. And we can go then. Let's come along here and jump into pin 3. Whoops. Pin 5 and then pin 3. Sometimes these things are a little tough to push in. Okay. So now what we've got is our pin um, 5 to pin 1 and pin 5 to pin 3. And up next, let's go ahead and take off of pin 3, our 33 microfarad, excuse me, 0.33 microfarad at 630 volt capacitor. Alright, we're going to come off of pin 3 right here. And we're just going to feed down here and pick an arbitrary spot. It doesn't really matter where. Alright, we've got a good connection then between those. And up next then, we're going to have to feed off of the 33 micro, um, 0.33 microfarad coming out of the first stage into pin 4 with a 1K resistor. So let's, uh, ooh, we're going to have to, uh, it's a good little jump from right here where we were taking this. Oh, and I'm able to remove this now because this is where we were taking the output, as you can see right here, um, of the first stage down here to this point. And then what we were actually doing is jumpering it over here to the BNC connection, which is feeding my oscilloscope. So we'll be able to get rid of that jumper at this point in time. But we've got to take a, uh, a jumper from here then, from the output of the first stage, feed it down in. And then we've got to feed into pin 4 right here. As you can see that, um, output of first stage feeding into pin, pin 4. Um, just like this, output of first stage feeding, in, feeding into pin 4. We've also got to take um, from that point a 220K back to ground, which we've got right here. If you can see, um, we had done that in the first stage right there. It takes it back to ground. All right, up next, let's go from pin 6 down to ground on this thing. So we just need to come over here and find pin 6, find a nice little spot for it, and then uh, Put our little uh, connection over to ground. If you notice, I am bridging these jumpers at this point uh, on the board here, both places, with, um, with the bridge it takes to continue the ground all the way from top to bottom there. So at that point, if we look, we've added in all the resistors here. Um, we've got our output. I do need to take and tie from that output a 100K to ground really quick over here. All right, so we'll just come from this... Uh, kind of arbitrary place. Oops. Bent the lead on that one nicely. And we'll just tie it over here. Uh, like we talked about before. To ground. Sometimes these things are a little tough to uh, get it, get in there. Okay. We've got that tied now from the output here to ground. Okay. And then we're going to take this output here and feed it into the pin here. Oops. Pin right here. Um, so that we can ultimately feed this, which is going up to our oscilloscope right now. So I'm just going to put a little jumper in here. And since it's too long to reach all the way over there, what I'm going to do is just feed to an arbitrary spot right here. Um, and then coming out of that spot in parallel, I'm going to feed right over here and feed into the pin, um, part of this little BNC connector. And then there's another place here that says shell, in other words, the outer part, the ground. Um, I'm feeding from it, if you'll notice back over here to ground at that point. 
And last up, if you'll notice, I'm coming out of my little built-in function generator on this oscilloscope. I mean, on this breadboard, and I'm feeding it to this point right here, from there to here. And that's just an arbitrary jump point that I'm then feeding over here to the uh, first wiper on this input where we have our volume control. Um, but I also want to tie that. Um, I want to take from the other side of that, basically. Um, over here, the ground side, and I want to tie that into our overall ground on the amplifier. And if you'll notice one thing I need to do, this, this little whole section here, I keep calling it ground, but um, I've got to find a way here to tie it back to the other ground, which will just be as simple as uh, connecting a jumper. So that whole row is now ground. Um, over here, this whole row is ground, and we've tied the two together with this little jumper. And last and final on this, we've actually got to come from pin 7 over here on this tube and feed over here to pin 7. Oops, I about missed it. Pin 7 on this tube. All we're doing is paralleling these heaters in these tubes. And we're going to feed from pin 8 over here to pin 8. So what it does is that's the 6.3 volts that are feeding via this cord right here to pin 7 and 8. It also sends it over here to this tube. Before I was trying to feed this tube via a little, that little floating circuit and I just couldn't get that to work, but amp works just fine this way. I should have uh, should have tried it to begin with. Let's, uh, let's get this thing going. Okay, before I fire it up, I've changed one little minor thing. The only thing I've done is I've fed, instead of up to the built-in function generator here, I fin fed down to uh, this pin here on this BNC, the pin one, and I fed the shell one over to ground to drive this thing. Then uh, via this piece of coax that's going up to my BK Precision. Just makes it easier for me to adjust um, while we're working here and um, keep things a little more accurate. Uh, this the little sliders on this built-in thing are uh, uh, not the easiest to, to adjust uh, precision, to precision. Um, let me see if I can get a dual camera set up going and we'll hook this thing up. Okay, just a few additions here. I've jumped from the pin, which is the center connector on this uh, BNC connector, which is coming from the function generator, just so I could take and use an oscilloscope probe and clip over here and uh, see the input signal. I also made a jumper here from uh, ground over to a point where I could then connect my oscilloscope this green cord that goes up to the oscilloscope ground um, so that I can actually use this probe um, and not have, it, not have it tethered. So let's go ahead and turn on the uh, high voltage power supply and it'll take a minute for it to warm up because it's a tube based supply as well as the, t the uh, heaters in these tubes have to heat up. But hopefully you can see here as it heats up it's now at 350 volts on the power supply. But as the heaters of these tubes warm up You'll start to see here on the oscilloscope, we've got a nice clean um, sine wave coming our way. And if we take a look at it here, beautiful clean little sine wave. All right, and we've got 32.6 or 7 volts floating around there on the output, 32.9. Um, not a bad output signal. Okay, up next what I want to do is I want to change off of channel 2 over to channel 1 on the oscilloscope, um, which is this probe right here. And what I want to do is connect right here to the input of the overall scope on channel 1. And if you'll notice, um, we've got here um, 0 0.48, 0 0.408 volts. So 0 0.4 volts, that's kind of on the high end of line level. In other words, if you had a DVD player, a CD player, um, a preamp, whatever you're driving with your iPod, um, 0.4 would be pretty, pretty much on the high end of that. Uh, in other words, the volume turned up pretty good. So let's then take a look. So 0.48 is feeding the input of this thing. Then let's go over here and come off of the uh, on the other side of the coupling capacitor. In other words, right on the output of this um, right here, the output of this stage. And if you'll notice, we got 3.6 volts. So we're feeding in 0.4, 3.6 volts out. So a little less than uh, a little less than 10 times um, gain on this thing. 
And then if we're very, very careful here, and we move off of that, and please don't ever do this at home, and we connect to this side, then we can see way up here at the 33 volts that we've got on the output. So from this one um, to this one, 3.6 to 33, there again, just slightly less than a 10 times gain. So overall, 100 times gain in this thing, and we're getting it 10 times out of this, 10 times out of this uh, second SRPP stage here. So hopefully that makes sense to you. Um, hopefully you're, you're understanding how this amplifier kind of works there. The signal's so small again, you can barely even see it. I have to turn the gain way up there. Still down at 0 0.49 volts we're feeding on the input of this thing. I thought we maybe we'd change over and see what happens um, feed it with a square wave on the input. Um, let's take a look here at the end of this first stage with the square wave. And there we go. Still not a bad looking square wave. Not a, lo not a lot of overshoot here. Uh, just a slight bit of rounding on the corners which is typical typical of a capacitor coupled stage. And then let's take a look here on the output. Wow, still nice and clean. Um, as you can see up here, right here and right here, very little overshoot at all. No ringing whatsoever, so none of the little back and forth ringing. Um, slight bit of slope here, uh, a rise on this, and then a sharp turn. So. All in all, not a bad circuit whatsoever. Beautiful, clean. And this 33 volts is then enough to drive the 807 um, tube itself pretty significantly. So hopefully this makes sense. Hopefully you learned a little something. We can uh, kind of go back to the beautiful little um, sine wave. There. Just the slightest. The top edge is beautiful and round. This, the bottom edge here has the slightest little peak on it you might be able to see right there and that's probably coming from the push-pull nature of this and uh, the, what they call it, the slightest bit of um, crossover distortion there. Hopefully you learned a little something here today. Um, hopefully uh, you didn't get too frustrated by having to watch the, uh, the video I posted of this part three where I couldn't get it to work uh, but we've got it all worked out at this point. Check it out I'm turning the volume control swing that thing all the way down um, as low as you would want to go with it. One volt out. That's the beauty of this uh, 100k potentiometer on the input here. Thanks again for watching everybody. Stay tuned. This is uh, part uh, section one and section two here of our overall triode dick design. All I've got left to put together is uh, this little section right here which we're actually working on uh, next door over here. You can actually see it uh, on this other breadboard that we're working on. So stay tuned, everybody. Um, we'll get around to that here in the next few days. Thanks for watching.